Lawyers of Reddit, at what point, when working for a defendant, did you realize, Smy client is a monstrous? We had a client try and enforce a post-employment restraint against a 19-year-old receptionist after she quit and started working for a competitor. The reason? He wanted to make her life hell because she wouldn't sleep with him. A creepy 57-year-old man. Him trying to sleep with her was the reason she quit. And surprisingly he didn't take our advice to discontinue his claim and so we ended up sending him elsewhere. Oh. I can share a good story. I had a teacher in high school who was a former lawyer. We always asked him why gave up his practice to start teaching. He finally caved and explained that his last case was a defense of three people. Apparently there had been a fourth. It was two couples. Who in the act of a drunken. Drugged out orgy. Decided to kill. Partially eat. And dismember one of the women. I guess it seemed like a good idea at the time. As a lawyer. He said it was pretty open and shut. But he had to get his clients the best result possible. And he was exposed to all the horrid details. The pictures. And their reasoning. My teacher had such a far off look when he explained it that we could see it really got to him. I've done a lot of prison legal aid. And I could tell stories about child molesters that would turn you green. But instead I'll turn you green a different way. I had a kid, 17, who was mildly cognitively disabled. Due to brain trauma he sustained at the hands of his birth parents. Who ended up with a really wonderful foster care family and thrived. He was a popular kid in school. Good athlete. Got a girlfriend and invited her to meet up and be teenagers one night in a corn silo, which I guess is a thing that country kids do. I don't know. This all comes from the pre-sentence investigation report I read before taking his case. But this girl met him at the silo and they were hanging out inside. By his account. They were having a nice time and he was really enjoying himself. Then for no particular reason. He picked up a 2x4 and bashed her skull in. He then used a combination of very crude farm implements, shovels, hose, to chop her body up and bury it in the corn and went home like nothing had happened. Hey. You asked. Eater. Holy shit. I didn't expect to wake up to 11k in karma and 100 replies this morning. I'll try to reply to those I can. And I do appreciate the gesture of giving me reddit currency. But folks. Reddit has enough money and when the firm needs more. They can go back to their venture capitalists. I would encourage you to make a donation to your local. United Way. HTTPS. WWW. United Way. Org. Or another reputable charity instead. Criminal defense lawyer. I can name a few instances where I was just absolutely disgusted with my client. Caveat. These are mostly years ago when I was taking just any old case. I most practice white collar and federal now. 1. I won a DUI case because the government messed up on something right before trial was to begin. My client gives me a hug and completely reeks of alcohol. He has driven to court. I took his keys and called his mother. 2. Client who was accused of molesting a 12 year old. He was mid 40s at the time and I had to shut him down real quick when he tried to tell me how the 12 year old was coming onto him. 3. I represented a woman for a grand theft charge. Left her in my office to get some things copied before she left. After she left. I realized my sunglasses and car keys were stolen. I tracked her down in the lobby and told her I was not going to represent her anymore and I would call the police if she didn't start empty her pockets in front of me and give me my things. 4. I had a client who was released after 25 years in prison for murder and then the same day he beats up his prospective new landlord. He ended up getting another 10 years. He was unrepentant and laughed about how he hit the guy so hard his eyeball popped out. I thought. Sith this guy deserves to be in prison. So took the case to trial anyway and, shocker, lost and he got 10, the max. 5. Client who pretended to be a doctor so he could sell steroids. According to the gov. He had numerous clients who were made to believe that his steroids would cure their cancer. They paid him hundreds of thousands of dollars and some of them died. I just thought that was pure evil. I had a client who was accused of domestic violence. 
essentially he threw his girlfriend out of a second story window. Now Hassos got a terrible history but so do a lot of my clients and his attitude is a little entitled, also typical. But he also knows the deal and wants a plea deal. So as I'm not really prepared when he absolutely refuses the no jail offer from the state, keep in mind there were like 5 witnesses. Why? Because they wanted him to pay for her medical bills. Okay. An arsehole but whatever not the worst. What did it was his counter offer. See ain't sot paying that bitch's bills. Tell them yes I'll pay for the window. S. Prosecutor was not happy. When I had to go to the US attorney's office to view the evidence in his case. There they were. The hundreds of images of child porn he had traded. The close up images of his babby sauce genitals that he had taken and sent around the internet. The pictures of his neighbor sauce daughters playing in their kiddie pool. Realized he just could not help himself. But he also never once claimed responsibility or showed remorse. So I don't sort feel too badly for him. My mom's sauce a lawyer and when I asked her the worst case she ever dealt with she told me this. So when I was a new attorney. I was working for a company and they gave me a case in a black folder and said that no one was going to take it so it was on me. When I looked into the folder. It was the most grisly. Disgusting description of sexual assault of a child that I vomited into my trash can. I had to take it. Met the girl. Very smart but terrified of everyone and everything. She told me how he hurt her every day and would climb in bed with her for a special uncle times every night. The girl was 5. When offered one of the dolls to show where he touched her she simply replies everywhere. So he had raped her every single night for at least a year and molested her multiple times. It was also suspected that he brought his friends over and did it but cold and sought be confirmed. The girl broke down in court and cold and sought stand as a witness. She cold and sought testify. She was the only witness. The mother testified he will and sought do anything. Same with the father. I got to watch this man who I knew with everything in me hurt this child buckle her into the car and drive her away with the parents. It was disgusting. I will never forgive anyone in that jury for as long as I live and I hope they rot in hell. S. I still don't sort know why some sort of psycho doctor was brought in or if one was brought in. But my mother wants to talk about what happened in the courtroom. Clearly it was more disturbing than what you read above. My mother quit that job and began working for another company soon after in a different sector of law. Criminal defense paralegal here. It's I've got stories for days. But the one that comes to mind is from a client that had been accused of raping his daughters, both who were under the age of 10 at the time. He had gotten a psychosexual evaluation from a nearby counseling office per hour request. And the results were sent to our office about a week later. Most of the testing questions were centered around what the client personally found to be the most sexually appealing. And predictably, all of his answers revolved around young children and extremely sexual situations. This guy spared no details. There were also questions in which a certain hypothetical situation would be given. And the client had to place it somewhere on the spectrum between not sexually erasings. It's very sexually erasings or anywhere in between. Every single hypothetical that he considered to be very sexually arousing had to do with children. Rape. Or just generally taking advantage of whoever the target was. Needless to say. Being alone with this client gave me the creeps. Bleh. Not a lawyer. But I've been a court reporter for a good 10 years now. I also do police interviews. One recent one. When I listened to the guy describe pimping out his young daughter online and laughing about how easy it was. How he was doing it as a favor for her. That she liked it in the end. They brought down a ring including a pastor. It was a day where I was super glad to cuddle my puppy when the going got tough. Luckily my job has a lot of WTF funny moments. It makes up for the tragic. My friend got roughed up by campus security and detained illegally by them. He didn't just sue the campus, but had a personal suit against the guard and threatened to make it as messy and public as possible. Shit scared. The campus offered to fire the guard if he dropped the suit. He proceeded to push his lawyer to take the longest. 
most painfully drawn out proceedings he could to have a 55 year old guard fired and lose his pension or have the university get dragged through the mud by every civil liberties group in the country. The university blinked at this and let the guard take all the shit. As an added bonus he made sure the guard got full notice of all of this on the 19th of December. My mom is a lawyer and always refuses to defend the really disturbing clients like the woman who wanted to get custody of her son at all costs but as soon as she had another kid with another guy she called my mom and said never mind I have a new child now or something like that or the woman whose daughter accused the woman sauce so boyfriend of rape and said woman walks up to my mom and introduces the daughter by saying this is my whore daughteress. I was a juror on a case. We had to listen to secret tapes of the defendant arranging the murders of all of the witness. The defense attorney had to act as if the defendant was trying to create his own sting to bring down a hitman. All of the remaining witnesses that testified had recently been in accidents or had forgotten everything. I wondered how that defense lawyer could take himself seriously. Not exactly a lawyer. And the client wasn't exactly a monster. But here is the closest experience I have. I was volunteering at a court free family law assistance program, I helped people fill out family law court forms, when one of the clients straight up asked us how to hide money from her husband she wanted to divorce. That is illegal to do during a divorce proceeding and I told her if she does that she risks losing every dime of her hidden money to her husband. She didn't want to hear that and kept trying to ask if there was a way to hide the money regardless. I got one of the actual attorneys in the clinic in hopes they could make the woman listen to reason. She was in the lawyer's office for a while but I don't think she ever actually listened to our statements telling her not to do it. Not me. My dad. After he got client out of a double murder charge by insanity plea. He visited the client in the mental hospital and the client laughed that he had fooled them all and had murdered his intended victims. This was the 80s. There wasn't any recording and so try as he might. My dad could do nothing due to there being no new facts in the case, double jeopardy. That was in the early 80s. He never took on another criminal defense case again. Ended up having a 30 year career in real estate and estate law then became a judge. If it makes you or him feel any better. That guy suffered if he spent an extended period of time in a state psych hospital. If you house or not guilty due to insanity. Yaws or almost guaranteed to live the rest of your life in psychiatric custody. Unless you can convince whoever is in charge of it that Yaws or fine to leave. That is not a defense that Sos accepted often at all. Or likely, or at least not anymore. And psychiatric custody is absolute hell from what is have heard. So yeah he probably left more fucked up than he went in if he ever actually left. I was appointed to represent a rapist. He was charged with level 1 felony rape. And it wasn't just any kind of rape. But home invasion rape at 5. 0 0 A. It was a college town and this random tramp was going around this apartment complex. Checking doors and found one that was unlocked. He goes in and gets on top of the victim and ties her to the bed. Then rapes her with his penis and also her dildo from the bedside table. He comes on her labia and lower back and then dumps a bunch of water all over her while still tied up. Then he takes her phone and some other property and unties her and tells her to not move for 30 minutes and leaves. I spent about 3 hours reading the case file and all the depositions of the witnesses. Afterward I felt like I was going to vomit. I felt sick that I'd be spending my time and effort defending him. I have been sexually assaulted more than once in my life and the stuff from this case is essentially my worst nightmare. His defense. It was consensual and they met outside at the bus stop at 3 in the morning and she told him he was a beast and invited him up to her place. When I went to visit him in the jail for the first time he said he had done some digging on the victim and found out she had a conviction for drink driving. He asked if we could bring this in to discredit her. It was hard for me not to flash angry at this. It was at this point I told him to take the deal for 20 years because he'd get 80 years at trial with the evidence the state had. Leo my worst is those who target the most vulnerable. Fear sauce a particular thought process that goes into that. It's us dark and predatory on another level. A well-known burglar would sneak into houses at night. Tie up. And subsequently beat old people. He didn't sot even need to. They were no threat and most never woke up. But Hesod wake them up and then tie them up. 
or another guy we got recently who only molested children with disabilities. He had access to loads of kids. But he only targeted kids with disabilities. The worst though was the guy who molested his 12 week old. I cried after that shit it was that tough. Dealing with both him and the baby was super tough. He was a real monster. A really horrible fuck. You could tell he got off on the whole thing and smiled the whole time. He also loved that it clearly had annoyed us and made us mad. Some people are barely human. Heard about this one through a friend. X is a young college student who gets picked up for drunkenly swerving through the road and had destroyed upwards of 10. 000 dollars of government and private property. My friend is graced with the task to defend. He says it's us going to be a quick one. Gets back the next day. And he tells me the police searched the kid's sauce vehicle sauce trunk and found about 400 pages of documents and 6 folders of photographs. The college student was bait for his parents and aunt and uncles to lure women back to their home where they would have a ritual orgy and a ritual burning of the body out in the middle of nowhere. They wouldn't sort keep any of the parts but they had a very lengthy record of how many people they were burning. Those 400 pages. Mind you not every page is each victim. They like to document how the sex was and what the bodies looked like when they burned. Apparently the student was off to get the pages and photographs bound into a book that he was going to make himself at a photocopy store for the family sauce ritual, not sure of the number, anniversary. I've spent my career in property law. By and large. I would say that in civil law you don't meet monsters so much as realize that the real monster is often the whole way the law. Or even society in general works. Very early on. As a trainee doing a stint in employment law. I remember attending a meeting with a senior guy at some company that ran nursing homes that was a client of the firm. Naturally. They employed loads of poorly paid. Often female staff. And the main thing they were interested in was making sure that the workforce didn't get unionized and that the company didn't have to recognize unions. They did not want to have to pay their staff more or improve their conditions. Not illegal. Of course. And the people involved weren't personally evil. But it was a classic case of come see the violence inherent in the system. To do what they were doing required them to be bad guys. Client stabbed a guy in the neck because voices told him he was a god and that Latinos, like him, were gods. He went crazy on the phone saying how people don't understand him, implying that he would stab people who don't agree with him. He was getting out on a plea deal after serving less than two years. I was helping him with a medical lawsuit. Shit like that makes me very angry. Also have defended murderers but they are usually polite to me. Defended a guy who I found out later on. Shot his daughter's cheating BF, lured him into the shed to help lift some wood then shot the guy in the back. Pretty fucked up. Cheating BF ended up burning himself nearly to death after surviving the shooting. Defended a domestic abuser who took no responsibility. Only people I refuse to defend? Child molesters. Can't do it. And I don't want to recuse myself from too many cases or I wouldn't have a job so that's my line in the sand. Also. I could write a book on obnoxious, ungrateful, childish clients, but that'd take forever. Years ago I worked at a criminal defense law firm. The lawyers I worked for were very selective of the cases they took on. They did have murder cases, drug trafficking, assault and so on. Mostly I felt sorry for those people and their families. There was one woman though that was evil. She tried to hire a hitman to kill her son-in-law. Just looking at her. And without knowing what she did. She sets off the vibe of a manipulative control freak. Watch out for overbearing mother-in-laws. Not a lawyer but there's an infamous case in Australia where I'd want to know what the defense lawyer thought of it all. And X200B. His name was Bilal Scaff and he was ringleader in the gang rape of six, known, teenage girls. Ranging from him and six other guys to him and 14 other guys. There were times where they left the girls for dead after hosing them down and leaving them soaked to freeze in winter. This all happened, I think, in 2000 or 2001. His original sentence was appealed and he got less time. The evidence was damning and I'd like to know how the lawyer felt defending him. And X200B. P.S. 
His brother was also a part of it and reached his end of non-parole sentence. But when he applied for parole he was denied as he still claims it wasn't really his fault or that it was rape. Instead claiming the girls were at fault asking for it. My worst client was a woman who was rude. Aggressive. Argumentative. Paranoid. She thought everyone was out to get her. She had a terminal illness and still acted like a total bitch. I represented her in three separate civil cases. She had gone through two lawyers already who dropped her. At one point even the judge had talked to me in his chambers after a hearing to advise me on how to deal with her, opposing counsel was present. I realized she was a monster when I had to present her for direct testimony and cross exam, before a different judge in a separate case, and she was probably one of the best witnesses I had ever presented. I had been dreading presenting her because her demeanor could subconsciously influence the judge sauce mind. Surprisingly. She answered all the questions briefly and directly. She was empathic. And she handled the cross-examination like a pro. I almost felt sorry for her. It was like she was a totally different person on the witness stand. The way she was able to act convincingly like a decent human being. Knowing she was a bad person I roll. Showed me how much of a psycho she was. I'm not a lawyer but I have a pretty unnerving story anyways. I work as a police officer and got a call up about a mom and dad fighting. Dispatch, I believe that's what they call it in America. I don't work there, told me that the dad was drunk and was very aggressive. When we arrived there we saw a little girl knocked out while her sister hysterically crying was trying to wake her up. The dad took the newborn and left the house leaving the kids and the mom behind. Later we found out that he killed the baby because he thought it was from another guy. It wasn't he was just too drunk to understand it was his kid. I got to talk to the lawyer of the family and she told me he had done some horrid things to them like taping the kids to their chair and forcing them to drink alcohol. But the thing that struck me the most was the 911 call the 6 year old kid made from the other room. It was the most horrible sound to hear her so scared screaming if the police could please come. At the end of the call you hear her dad entering the room hitting and kicking her because she called the police. I had goosebumps all over my body and will never forget that call. Sorry for the long story and excuse my English it is not my native language. A friend of mine was a serving detective for a British police force. He was tasked with investigating another officer of a higher rank to him in relation to him having relations with underage boys. He said that there was always something fishy about this officer but he couldn't put his finger on it until they got him into an interview room and he turned into a creepy pedophile right in front of them. At this point it was all allegation and behavior so he was released on bail but they put an undercover officer on him straight away. Pretty lucky really as within 30 minutes he had took himself to a local park and was photographing kids playing. That was the evidence they needed to hold him. During a search we found his computer under some floorboards in his house with decades of indecent pics on it and thankfully he is now serving a lengthy prison term. Absolute creep. Not an attorney. But a story from an attorney. I had a family member who committed murder. A pretty terrible double murder in the presence of a child. I had to testify against the family member which meant I had to spend a lot of time with the defense also. The attorney knew the family member was guilty but god he was going to mount the best defense possible and he did. Years later I ran into that attorney and he told me the very first time I sat down with X. He looked me right in the eye and told me things I can't tell you. But I have been a PD for over 20 years and X scared me worse in the first 5 minutes of our meeting than any other client ever had before or since. I know that X told the lawyer that he should have taken out the little bitch kid that witnessed and he told him how he should have done it and for the sake of everyone I won't share that. But yeah. In 5 minutes he knew X was a monster and he still gave him one hell of a defense. Hated him for it. But respected him doing his job. The lawyer did however not represent X in any of his appeals. Have mostly avoided criminal defense but not family law. Worst was the surgeon with narcissistic personality disorder and a drinking problem divorcing a public official, with a serious drinking problem and a few personality disorders, who'd been bed hopping with state level politicians just before a statewide election. They reached an agreement. Then he fucked it up. Neither of them had any self control. 
they would drunk text each other in the middle of the night and he'd start screaming at me at 7. 30 am. A lawyer would file emergency motions about whatever it was by noon. Months after we parted ways. He wrote me to demand all of my fees back. I wanted to write back and ask him how often he refunded fees when he successfully removed a patient's appendix and they went home and blew their own brains out. But didn't. A distant second was the near octogenarian who was getting older ladies hooked on meth and getting them to help him move it's in his old pickup truck. He gave me the creeps. A judge friend of mine once told me. Remember. The enemy is the client. Best piece of advice I've gotten in these 20 years. Not for a defendant. But as a prosecutor at the state attorney's office in Miami. There was this 15 year old Haitian kid when I was working in the juvenile division that still haunts me. I remember his face even now because he had two distinct tattoos on it. With very bloodshot eyes. He was arrested after he ran into police chasing after a teenage girl with a Gatorade bottle. Turns out the girl worked at a gas station and had called the police a week earlier because the boy was sitting outside staring at her. He had came back a week later. Walked into the store and stole a Gatorade in front of her without a word. Dumped it outside. Pushed a patron away and poured gasoline in the bottle. Then starting walking back towards the attendant. She freaks out and starts running out the store. He comes in. Gets a lighter and starts chasing after her. He runs right into two patrol officers and gets arrested. Just looking at him in court freaked me out. Which was unusual to say the least. He seemed completely dead inside. Showed absolutely zero emotions and didn't sort say a single word at any stage. Even after sentencing. Five years later. I was watching the first 48 and saw the Haitian kid sauce mugshot at the end. With the same tattoos. Arrested for home invasion and triple murder without motive in Miami. Former juvenile court attorney and was listening to this case. I was not involved so no RPC issue. Two minors. Both male. Had decided to rob a pizza delivery guy. So they called for a delivery pizza to an empty apartment building. The delivery guy arrived and was subsequently robbed. Something like a large pie his phone and a 2 liter. The miners then decide they want to take the delivery guy's car. So they take his keys. While one is trying to start the car. The other decides to sexually assault the delivery guy. Turns out the delivery guy's car was a manual stick shift and the miners have no idea how to drive it. Instead of ending their crime spree. They then kidnap the driver and force him to drive them to their other friend's house across town. Once they're the same minor from earlier sexually assault the pizza delivery driver again. Then they beat up the delivery driver and run off. Driver makes it into a local shop down the road where he calls police. Adult offenders don't sort really bother me. But minors. Their brains are not fully developed enough to understand the weight of their actions. Kids can be monsters. I'm a retired correction officer from Nick, Rikers Island. I once had an inmate ask me to look at his case. I had once gotten a 100% innocent guy out of jail. When I had just started and I was considered one of the smarter CEOs. This guy shot another man to death at an ATM in Midtown Manhattan during a robbery attempt. It was all caught on videotape. The FBI had computer enhanced one frame from the video in which the suspect's head was in full profile. His right ear was clearly seen and had a very distinctive characteristic. It was sort of square at the top and not rounded at all. His crooked, broken nose was all I needed to say to myself he's guilty. What fucked my mind up was this pose was telling me he had every right to shoot the victim. He looked at himself as a professional robber. If you resisted then he felt justified to fuck you up. In this case he shot and killed the ATM customer because he tried to fight back. I couldn't believe how this guy was behaving. Smiling when he told me he was a professional. I went and got a book called Inside the Criminal Mind. It helped answer some questions I had about my new line of work. I have since retired from the NYC DOC and I'm so happy to put all that negative shit behind me. Edit. Pose got 25 years to life. I had a professor in college who was a defense lawyer prior to being a professor. He told us the reason why he decided to stop defending people. He had a client who was accused of raping a teenage girl. From what I remember from his story. 
there was no DNA evidence to point to the client. The client was adamant to my professor that he was completely innocent. My professor argued in court at the trial and was successful in defending his client and got him acquitted. After everything was all said and done, he and his client went out to dinner to celebrate the victory. My professor said they were talking about some random topic when the man picked up his drink. Said you know. He then took a sip and said I think she liked it. Double quote. My professor recalled that the smirk on the guy's face made him want to vomit. Not a lawyer but I worked in a federal prison. Several inmates come to mind but the one I'll tell about is a former Catholic priest. He'd given up his vocation years before but he got caught up in a child porn sting. At that time sentencing was based on how many images a suspect had. He had thousands and was facing a maximum of 40 years. The guy was in his 50s so that would have been essentially a genuine life sentence. Since federal inmates can only earn 15% good time. At his sentencing hearing. And I read this transcript so I know this as a fact. He told the judge when he was a priest he'd molested hundreds of young boys. Despite treatment and his own remorse he felt completely incapable of stopping his obsession with child porn and with molestation. He had not ever been even charged with these crimes but he felt guilty enough to admit them and then ask the judge to impose the full penalty so he'd be locked up for the rest of his life. Criminal defense attorney. I represent a guy charged with kidnapping. Attempted murder. Domestic battery. Etc. The guy allegedly grabbed his GF from her house and took her to the nearby river to kill her. He denies this entirely. Recently had a 404B hearing, where... Basically, the state attempts to get his prior bad acts admitted as evidence at trial, where three prior girlfriends all testified that he strangled them, beat them, etc. At least one was hospitalized for a broken jaw. Guy does not deny any of it. I was forced to cross-examine all of them and the only thing I had to go on was their credibility and possible drug use lack of memory. Not effective at all. Additionally, the local paper quoted me pretty much attacking these victims of domestic violence. The guy's face never changed during their testimony. Realized then I do not care if he goes to prison for life because there is a 0% chance he will not beat more women. Basically he was watching his neighbor through the window and various stages of undress. Got worked up. Minutes later the victim showed up at his shop to purchase some food. She was alone. He closed the door behind her and yeah. Well that's it. Prick got 25 years for that. That girl was 7. 7 fucking years old. You have no idea how often in our country the mentality of well if I'm worked up and there is a possibility of release close by. Regardless of whom or what or what age or consenting or not that possibility is or might be. I'm entitled to take its surfaces. Welcome to South Africa. The adverts on T. V showing Table Mountain and the Ocean. Is a load of shit. 47 violent murders every day. 1 in 3 of every woman killed. Is murdered by her own spouse or partner. Like always. Not exactly the answer to the specific question. But I doubt you're gonna have legitimate lawyers perusing Reddit and telling you about their cases. Seems like a very fine line of confidentiality to walk to tell internet strangers about things that happened in the courtroom. So I'll give my story. My ex-aunt has been through about 10 lawyer teams in what's going on an 8 year lasting custody battle. And we're not exactly in a place where there's that many lawyers. Her last. And final. Group she literally had to hire from another state because word has gone out in the legal community to not ruin your career associating with this woman. She has filed every CPS sized type of injunction accusing our entire family of rape and molestation to draw this out as long as possible. On my side. The one case that got brought up in court was that I had raped my then what would have been 8 year old cousin while I was studying abroad literally on the exact opposite side of the planet. Obviously size can't just ignore a claim like that. But when it finally got to a judge after these accusations and he realized wait. This kid wasn't within thousands of miles of the child in about a year from when this supposedly happened. He brought her and her then lawyer up with contempt charges. I'm just vaguely describing it all. It gets way deeper and more fucked up. Thankfully once a kid is 14 they get way more rights as far as court proceedings go. 
so he can finally tell the judge he wants nothing to do with his mom unless it's by his terms. I saw this play out in court. Plaintiff was a prison guard who was pressured forced to have sex or oral sex with her boss, the warden, on a number of occasions. The warden threatened to have her fired and blackballed if she refused or blew the whistle. After this carried on for a long while. She quit and filed a lawsuit. But unfortunately her idiot lawyer didn't start timely file with the correct authorities. At the end of the day. Her claim was barred and the warden enjoyed sovereign immunity. At the hearing. You could see the judge asking the prison guard questions to see if there was a workaround or some way for her complaints to survive the pending motion to dismiss. But there wasn't sought. That was hard to watch. It was even worse when the prison guard began to quietly cry. Fortunately the warden wasn't sought at the hearing. And the attorney representing the state was professional and just focused on the legal arguments. He dipped out of the hearing in a hurry. My girlfriend was on the jury for a capital murder charge. He brutally raped and murdered a young mother and attempted to do the same to her toddler. Who somehow miraculously, or not depending on how you look at it, survived. The son grew up and was about 14 by the time that this case was brought forward to determine if the death penalty would be used, obviously the killer had already been in prison. Was found guilty long ago, or if he would avoid the death penalty and spend three life sentences in prison. He had originally attacked several women before this incident and sent two to the hospital. But was released with a slap on the wrist after serving minimal jail time. The murder was preventable. But leniency let this violent man back out on the streets. What is sad is that every single witness for the defense was a member of his family. And every single one of them was caught lying under oath. Even over the most inconsequential things. It's as if the whole family, mother, father, brothers and sisters, was physically incapable of saying anything truthful. None of them even showed any sympathy for the victims or even acknowledged that rape and murder are wrong. The killer showed no remorse either. What was really chilling, however, was the fact that every woman that he attacked looked strikingly similar to my girlfriend. And he stared at her with a blank expression almost the entire time. It really freaked her out and she still has nightmares about it. Not a lawyer. But work for a law firm as an investigator. One of our clients stabbed an ex-lover multiple times over $100. Perp then ran out of the house all bloody. Neighbor and her teenage daughter see him covered in blood and rush inside to see if they can help while they call 911. Victim is still alive. On the 9 stroke 11 call the daughter maid. You can hear the mom singing Amazing Grace while she tried to stop the bleeding. You can also hear the victim. With a stab wound in her neck. Gurgling on blood while she tries to sing along. The EMTs arrived in under 3 minutes. But it took the police 19 minutes from the call to show up to clear the scene for them. She lived for 17 minutes. I saw the photos of the scene with the body still in place. It looked like a scene straight from Dexter. Late to the party but anyways. My first internship in law school was at a matrimonial law firm in a very wealthy area. Think millionaires and billionaires getting divorced. One of the first cases I worked on involved the parents of a victim of a high-profile school shooting. The parents were divorced and had been prior to the death of the child. And were now battling over who would get the victim's compensation fund money and the funds they received from a fundraiser they set up themselves on a GoFundMe type site. These were incredibly wealthy people fighting over what was literal chump change to them and asking the public to donate to them as if they needed it. They were so clearly exploiting the death of their child for money and to piss off the other parent. It was honestly one of the most disturbing things I have encountered. Ever. I could have got my client off on a technicality. He was already serving 10 years for armed robbery when another case came up of gang rape. I went to check the case file and saw that they had made a muck of gathering evidence and blood samples. The detective said he was just going to archives and pointedly left the file out. I read the woman's account of her 14 known assailants from her home village, including my client. I dropped the case then and there. He died in a gang initiation in prison shortly afterwards. But he was apparently one of the kingpins. Sometimes you have to know when to fold them. Civil defense here so maybe not as juicy as the crim defense folks. 
Some of the work I do is employment defense. Particularly sexual age harassment discrimination cases. Is some pretty cynical and see a lot of cases where plaintiffs are full of shit. Particularly in harassment discrimination cases. In one case I was defending a company and that company sauce manager. Jointly. The manager seemed like a straight up guy and I pride myself in being a good judge of character. I was pretty convinced the case was just payback from a disgruntled employee. To my credit. The plaintiff. A 38 year female. Was a really poor employee by all accounts. Still. It didn't stop prepare me from what I found doing a review of every email the company had stored on their servers. Not only did this guy stick his hand down this woman's sauce shirt without consent. When she threatened to go to HR he said her sod get her fired and make sure she never got a job again. The lady was a single mother with three kids. He also propositioned her for sex in exchange for a day off. He thought the email had been wiped because the company had a one year retention policy. Apparently. Some of the company's older emails remained on a server before the policy was put in place because of the migration of the emails from an older outsourced IT company, not sure if my terminology is right here. I had to substitute out of the case thereafter for conflict reasons since my two clients so interests were no longer aligned. I got arrested when I was younger and wound up county jail for a bit. When you first get transferred there from the police station holding. You end up seeing a judge who sets your bail. The whole thing is done from inside the jail and through a TV screen. So you never see the judge or your public defendant in person. It was my first time doing this whole thing and I was sticking nearby this guy that went by repo. Who had been in and out of jail before. We're waiting for our turn in front of the judge and there is this kid ahead of us. They really didn't care much about privacy so you could hear the whole thing if you were next in line. This was was barely 18 years old. Like just a week over and he had a rap sheet that was extremely long. They get to the current charge that he was in there for. Which was allegedly smacking a brick over the head of an elderly man and robbing him. I was very surprised by that. But I was even more surprised at how Repo reacted to this. Even though he had been in and out of the system for all sorts of crimes and had met a ton of other criminals. Something like that was over the top for him. Especially since this kid was so young. It's pretty sad to think that this kid's life was already that messed up at such a young age and was probably going rogue get worse from there.